Our next guest here was the number one pick in the 2013 draft. He's already played six NHL seasons. Feels like he just got here. He's been a hot finalist, and he won the Call the Trophy as Rookie of the Year. He averages more than a point per game in the playoffs and just under a point in the regular season. I wish I had more to say about you because he just gave the best intro ever to your pal Sid. But anyways, welcome to the podcast, Nathan McKinnon. Yeah, it's not easy. Uh, he didn't win the Calder. Yeah, I did win the Calder, and you know, Sid didn't win the Calder. <laughs> yeah, no, not a big right. deal. <laughs> yeah, I got that on you, Sid. He only had 50 more points to me that year, but it's all good. No worries. <laughs> So is the, the playoffs obviously just ended? Is the bad taste in your mouth still there from from losing the, the man of what you guys did this year? Yeah, I think just we felt like it could have been anybody's year. When Tampa got swept, we were just like, oh, my God, like you just never really know. You know, you always hear get to the playoffs, but you hear that. But L.A., Chicago, and Pittsburgh are the only teams that win, so it doesn't really feel like anybody can win, you know, because it's always feels like the best teams with the best players win. Um, I'm not saying the Blues didn't have – I guess they didn't have the best players in the league. They just had four lines, 70, that were unbelievable. Um, I'm good friends with Ryan O'Reilly and Braden Shen, so I get to hear about their locker room. They were so tight. So, um, But, yeah, we felt like it could have been anybody's year this year, and it, it definitely stung a lot. Did you continue to watch the playoffs after you got knocked out, or did you not be bothered? Uh, yeah, probably until the final. Um, my first couple of years, when Sid won back-to-back cups, I was actually here at the Stubborn Goat, uh, <laughs> just being the biggest Pittsburgh fan of all time. Well, I was in the NHL. You had his jersey on at yeah, the Stubborn Goat? Yeah, it felt like a different league. I, I didn't even feel like I was in the same league as those guys. Uh, but, um, no, it's it's you know, things are different now. I feel like we have a chance, and, you know, it's especially with the Blues winning, it feels like anybody could have won this year. Were you surprised at all that O'Reilly won the con smite? Did you realize he? Did you know all along he had that in him? Yeah, he took a lot of heat. You know, I, I wanted to like, I kind of wanted to tweet something out of defending him when. Okay, you know, that's when you when you have those thoughts, yeah. do it because that really helps our podcast. Yeah, we can, no, talk, we can then talk about your <laughs> tweets, <laughs> and chicklets. And, um, when he I, he said after the season, you know, he's he's lost a little love for the game, and I think people took that out of context. I mean. People just be like, oh, these guys are millionaires. They don't. They should just be happy with that. But you know, we, we take a lot of pride in what we do. And um, with with Factor, he is so passionate about hockey. Anybody that knows him, he loves the game. He works so hard. And and coming last just doesn't sit well with someone like that. Yeah. And, um, he's such an amazing teammate. You know, we're still friends with me and Tice. Go to dinner with him and Braden every time we play the Blues. And um, he's such an amazing guy. So really happy for him. Um, you, teammates, um, Landeskog. Yeah. Obviously, tough moment for him with the offside situation, but talk about a guy right after the game, just completely owned it, didn't blame anyone, just seems like a type of guy you want to go to bat for. Yeah, I love Landy. I mean, he is the perfect captain. Um, the most selfless guy I've ever played with. Um, doesn't care about points and you know his own you know personal accomplishments. He just wants the team to win and, and everyone to do all around him. And, um, you know, he's uh, he took took a lot of heat for that offside, but I don't know. The gate was kind of stuck that game. It was weird. Like the really, it was wow, like, it was interesting. Like a, it was Breaking like a, news. Yeah, it was like sticky. I thought, and you know, it's usually easy to just change on your own. And 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 Varley was the backup goalie, but where he sat was like was an uncomfortable, you know, distance away from being like the gate guy. You know, yeah. whatever. So, but it was sticky, and I think he was just trying to rattle it, and it just sucks. I mean, to you know, it's. I, I think it was offside looking back, but it was so it was so close that maybe they could have just let it go. <laughs> people are people are people are gonna think you're complaining about it, but like oftentimes those building boards are being taken off, put back on. Yeah. So sometimes the latch doesn't equal off as even as before. Like I know the crew before the game is supposed to make sure it does. Or humidity and shit. I know this sounds crazy. Yeah, it there was like matters. a there was like a WrestleMania event. I mean I remember the a couple the day before game one you know so there's stuff in and out of that building san jose is a a pretty hot spot wow and then then that i mean looking at it over i thought it should have been it should have counted as a goal all of a sudden it would have been tied 2-2 but i guess we'll leave that the pass behind us yeah (laughs) we're not going to try to twist the (laughs) knife anymore like just ask him 50 more questions about how his team lost Landeskog must have just like people just staring at him. Huh? That guy's oh, he's hot as shit yeah, too. He's a perfect man, hair. man rocket. He's right? a complete man rocket. Like, walk so around hot. with him. So hot. Yeah, he's uh, <laughs> six two, like shredded. Those like, Swedes, yeah, man, they get like, it all. Seriously, huge head, but like a lot, you guys have a a lot of me head, too. Though. Massive head, but a lot of good face <laughs> to go with his head. So he's a good looking dude. 
Uh, uh, Tyson Berry has a lot of ammo on you and set me over. <laughs> so I'll just start off with an easy one. He goes, ask Nate about his most recent, recent watch purchase. Is that it? Is that the one you're wearing? No. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why he's talking about that. Oh, <laughs> you're like, Jesus Christ, Tyson. Yeah, like I wanted to buy a watch and I bought a an Audemars uh, watch. Oh, uh, an AP? An AP, yeah. Oh, so well, those good. are great. Well, how do you say it? I never want to say it because I, I don't, don't want to sound like the, the guy. Peugeot or... No, P- uh, Audemars Piquet. Uh, are you sure, Biz? I, I, I'm 99. <laughs> I think we're all guessing. <laughs> I used to have one. So, all you know is they're nice. Yeah. So, uh, I, Tice, I mean, he, he grew up with... You know, he, uh, Silver Spoon. Oh, uh, I, had to say I had to say it. Lenny, Lenny, Barry, you. Lenny Barry took care of him growing up. Um, but so he knew a lot about watches, and I just wanted to bring him with me and, and, and you know, get some intel. And we went to a, a watch place first to look at, supposed to be for my watches, and then he bought a Patek Philippe. Like, oh. Within 10, yeah, which oh. is a lot more expensive. Jeez, those are like 50K. <laughs> So he's yeah. he's, so so he's already spending, spending his money. It. He's gonna get. I guess he see what he knows. He's gonna get some cash coming. Yeah, like you said in the pot, he's getting he's getting at least nine. So he's good. He's so good. basically, he had me bring up that story so he would get mentioned about having a yeah, Patek sure. Philly. Okay. So yeah. what a selfish yeah. piece of shit Tyson Berry is. Yeah. I wonder what all these, the rest of these questions are down here. Well, well, before we even get to more of those, like, so we're in Halifax and and you're from here. Now I, I'm wondering. I read the story on that. There was a chance you were going to go to college, right? You, you didn't really want to go to the Quebec League if it wasn't in Halifax. Is that fair for me to say? Yeah, there was just a couple teams I would have went to, but yeah, that's pretty fair to say. So, all right, so you were skating with the Omaha Lancers. I remember playing against them, and yeah. this is when the Quebec draft's going on, and yeah. you get picked, and you end up getting your rights traded to the Mooseheads here. Mm-hmm. Right away, did you know, all right, I'm going to go? Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, Pat Brisson's my agent, and he said not to go to Bay Camo, so I was just kind of listening to him. Um, I am my go. guy. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> I, I got drafted by Big Kamal. We we told him before the draft that I probably wouldn't report, and um, but it, Cam Russell called me. I was still 15 years old that he traded uh, for me, and I was so excited. I, I grew up big, biggest Mooseheads fan and loved going to the games and um, being a super fan of Sid whenever he came to town. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it was it was pretty cool to uh, you know to be part of the Mooseheads. So, all right, so you're a huge fan of Sid, like that. You're growing up locally here, no no questions asked. Yeah. (laughs) Then you start becoming like a very elite player. You're looking like a similar type path here, career arc, and then all of a sudden Shattuck comes in the picture, just like it did for him. Yeah, it was. It it wasn't as a coincidence as you might think. I was such a super fan growing up um, that I figured if, you know, if Sid went to Shattuck, I should go to Shattuck. And, <laughs> you know, they don't want you, Nate. Yeah. He's like, oh, well, Sid went there. Yeah. I'm going. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, but, yeah, I, I think, you know, it's such a great program, too. It wasn't just Sid that went there, Parise, Taze, uh, I think Drew Stafford. They have a lot of NHL players. Yeah, they did. And it was a great it was just a great atmosphere for me at the time. And um, I was uh, the reason why I really went, I mean, I – Definitely would have went when I was 15, but I, I didn't know if I'd get exceptional status in midget. As a, I'd have to be the best Nova Scotian player in my age, and sometimes I don't give it to you. I thought I was. Wait, but is that to play in the Quebec League as a 15-year-old? No, no, as a 14-year-old to play in midget as oh, an they, underage. Oh, they have to give exceptional status for that as well. Yeah, so you have to be ranked the number one uh, player in your own age group to to get it as four, at 14. And I was scared I'd have to go back to Bantam uh, locally, and it was it was kind of weak at that Ready point. Ready to move so, on from that. Yeah, so I just left. <laughs> I was too scared to, to try. So you kind of even jab yourself about following in Sid's footsteps. So you end yeah. up building a house here next to him. Yeah. yeah and just, then just because him. Sid has a gym in his place, you want to build a state-of-the-art gym. I did, yeah. But because he follows around Sid so much, Sid bullies him into working him out, working out at Sid's older, <laughs> I barely, literal, I, uh, littler, shittier gym. <laughs> yep. And he has a state-of-the-art gym that he's wasted his money on. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, Sid. <laughs> it's like, I'm like, can we just use my gym once in a while? <laughs> he's like, nope. Nope. No, that's Sid's every day. Uh, mine's 12 years, 13 years newer, everything newer. Your first um, cup, then you, yeah, you can be like, yeah. hey. When I get three cups, maybe I can work out at my gym with Sid. <laughs> How I old was, were you? Oh, sorry. Please. Oh, I was struggling with the word little, literaler. Literaler? Literally. Oh, what? I don't even know what word you're saying. <laughs> well, I was trying to say smaller. like it Smaller. Was, yeah, I should have yeah. said that. Yeah, I don't think little lure is a word. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. How old were you when you first met Sid? Um, I was, uh, I think I was 14 or 15. So the reason I, I got my shirt on uh, O'Brien Hockey. Uh, Andy. Supporting Andy O'Brien. Um, but yeah, so I, 
I started my agent Pat again set me up with Andy O'Brien um, and I thought that was the coolest thing ever I'm getting Sidney Crosby's trainer I was 15 um, so one day he brought me to Sid's gym in, uh, and then whatever in uh, Halifax and I was freaking out I saw him walking up from like his house and I was like freaking out like, like what is going like on right now like, what is that's an hour ago at the window like, you could have lifted 400 like, pounds at that point dude. yeah like jacked. I was just and I remember like him my dad my dad drove me out and Andy were just all talking and I just did like high knees I wouldn't stop because Andy told me to do high knees so I didn't stop for like 20 minutes going back and forth like is this the whole workout yeah I was just doing high knees because I was too scared to stop and ask like if I should do something else and I just was just looking at Sid the whole time like I wanted to impress him right that I worked hard and I was like serious about hockey and uh, that's a true story this is like, next day can't even move this is just yeah. so funny that just like a superstar of the NHL this is how it is but it's so much better than a kid who's just like Hey, what's next? You know, like yeah. that's what, it shows a lot about character. True, true, truly. absolutely. And has a situation like that ever arise where, like, from such a small hometown, there was such a tight gap? I was going to ask that. I don't know. Like, where, where, like, as in, like, you're coming in as I wouldn't say he's going out, but but on the latter yeah. part of his career. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, I came in. Um, he was 26, so he had a, he's he's had some amazing uh, years since. Oh, it's then. true prime. Yeah, true Excuse prime. <laughs> Sorry, no, no. Um, but yeah, it was, it's it's pretty cool relationship we have. It's more of a brotherly thing, um, you know. I I just kind of whatever Sid says I do. You know, he's so wise and uh, he knows he's done it all. And obviously, um, when I was 15, I I never thought I'd be friends with the guy. I was just yeah. wanted to get his autograph and a picture, you know. So it's cool. How it's worked out. Did he kind of help you navigate things as far as being a big prospect back at that time, like um, going through stuff? Yeah, you know, it's, it kind of let me figure it out for my own. I think. Yeah. The biggest thing that I, I I take away from with that is just how hard he works. I mean, you hear it all the time, but he is a he is a a, a freak in the gym. And um, I have, I'm just gonna tell the story. I've been I wanted to tell it. Uh, it was my first workout with Sid ever. So I I mean I met him when I was 15, but I got drafted by Colorado. Um, whatever 2013. I was still 17 years old and. Uh, Sid and Andy always went to PEI for around Canada Day. So that would have been like a week after the draft, five days after the draft. And um, they do like a, a beach workout. And so I get there, I meet Sid, I'm like fired up. Like I can't wait to work out with Sidney Crosby. <laughs> and we, you know, we're we're doing this this workout and I'm exhausted. You know, like I'm so bagged. I just I just got in. My dad drove me up to, to PEI and we do 10... Uh, hill sprints up like a sand dune. I don't know if you ever see on a beach there's these dunes. Oh, and yeah. So this is this is I'm not even uh, this is an exaggeration or anything. We do we do ten uh, hill sprints and he beats me on all nine to start. Like he crushed me on all nine. On the tenth You're one, getting rattled a little bit, right? No, no, not at all. I'm <laughs> like I'm like I'm like yes, like he's beating me. Like this is great. Like I was like too scared to like you know. I, I you don't want to beat him. You're too scared yeah, to see what happens. Yeah, I don't want to beat him. But on the tenth sprint, I got the head start, and I was I was beating him. I was halfway up the hill, and then I feel this like hand on my ankle, and then my face smacks into the sand. I don't even know him. <laughs> What a I'm 17, bag. so I was beating up up the hill, but then <laughs> he literally grabbed my ankle and like dragged me down the sand, dude. And then and then he finished the race and got his and got his ten what? victories. And then, you know, in, in, yeah, in that's Sid's what he style, did. Uh, Andy's yeah. like Sid. Uh, that was cheating. He's like, I didn't fucking touch him. <laughs> I didn't touch him, Andy. <laughs> fucking slipped. Took the video. I know. That's probably. No, he, he what, what do you say? What do you? I. Yeah. And yeah, you got thanks I, for the sand I, sandwich. I was like, I was, I was like kind of laughing, but he was like, he was kind of laughing, but he took the win for sure. He got all ten. So oh my I, god! Like, like he grinned, but didn't acknowledge the fact that he did that. Yeah, it, it's tough to remember exactly, but he didn't really. Uh, I don't remember hearing a sorry from him. That's for sure. But um, <laughs> I was told to ask you about the amount of sweet potatoes you eat in a season. <laughs> <laughs> did Tyson? Oh yeah, yeah. Tyson's just teeing me up. Um. Yeah, so I, <laughs> it's it's gross. I just, I. Um, That's the weirdest you thing must to be just fart crush all, all year. Yeah, I just I try to get off the pasta and just crush these baked sweet potatoes and um, I bake chicken and I bake four sweet potatoes and there's nothing on it. That's all I eat. Wow, uh, four. 
for a pregame meal? <laughs> yeah. Chicken and four sweet pota- four four baked sweet potatoes. Yeah, that's all. And I then eat. you're buzzing around at the speed you're buzzing around at. Are you yeah, shitting me? Yeah, and I and I have some snacks. I try I try a lot of things. I try to be pretty innovative and people give me some advice. I tried like organic applesauce in between periods. That didn't really work. Um, but Tice is... What is this all based Ty- off Tice of is, your blood uh, work? And, and, and yeah, what you I did some blood work and um, I did some things that I'm, you know, I don't want to be going to nerd mode here, but things that Too I... Too late. My, <laughs> yeah, but I think this is interesting actually. Yeah. Same. So yeah, I did this, I did this uh, blood work and it shows everything that you're intolerant to and um, I got set up with a really smart nutritionist um, that he analyzed my blood work and told me some things I should should and should eat and you know, everybody's body's different and, and what I'll perform to better and um, you know he thinks uh, you know pasta um, you know makes your blood sugar drop and that makes you kind of feel tired and sweet potatoes kind of levels that out so you have more energy throughout the day so that's kind of why I switched Is there any food that you were told you shouldn't be eating anymore that you were like no yeah, like, it's just kind of every, like dairy, you know, a lot of ice. Yeah. yeah, I love the sweets and, um, you know, some weird spices and stuff, but nothing crazy. Um, ice cream flavor. We asked uh, DeBrink at his favorite, and he's Dude, like, chocolate. chocolate. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, this guy's a serial killer. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, All right, we're Chicago, good. Thanks beware for when you, when you give him 65 million, he eats just chocolate ice yeah, cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where do you hide the bodies, kid? <laughs> um, <laughs> but what's your favorite flavor? Uh, cookie dough. Yeah, um, right. Tyson and I, uh, he loves Dairy Queen. Um, he says if he ever wins the cup, he'll eat some chocolate chip cookie dough out of the out of the cup. So he, he's a little chubster. Yeah, he, I think growing up he was a little fat kid. Uh, he slimmed he slimmed out a little bit now. <laughs> so you had just turned eighteen when you were your first time in the NHL. Were you overwhelmed at all, or was it almost like ridiculous that you were eighteen playing against these guys you looked up to? No, I was I was terrified. I remember some of my teammates would probably find that hard to believe now. Um, I'm pretty comfortable in the room now, for yeah. sure. But <laughs> when I first came in, I was 18. I, I was so so nervous. I mean, the, you know, you have like captain skates before the before the actual training camp starts. Mm-hmm. So I came in early, and I and I I got there really early, and I did the workout we we're supposed to do, um, and then everybody else showed up. So I just did the workout again. I was so scared. <laughs> I want people to think I wasn't doing the workout, you know. Oh man! <laughs> and I was just like, I'm oh. how scared this guy is with like everything. He's just dominating life. He's yeah. like, I got to do it again. I'm yeah. not gonna stop. <laughs> I know. Wow. That's. I, I I remember that. I'm like Jesus. Like I I don't want guys to think you know like I was first overall. I don't want guys to think that I don't do you know what everyone else does and not part of the team. So I just did it again. But I was just I was terrified. I remember that. Yeah. First. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Your first moment, I ask this a lot of guys, like your first, like yeah. holy shit moment in the NHL, like wow, I'm, this is real. Yeah, you ever get crushed that first year by anyone? Um, well, I Sid almost broke my ankles. Actually, there's a video. Um, <laughs> he did like a little stutter step, and I like went, I went flying. It was one of those. He like broke my ankles. That was kind of a welcome to the NHL. It was like my twelfth game. I remember Getzlaff saying congratulations to me. Um, I thought that was really amazing. Huh. Yeah, you know, that's I, cool. He's like, congrats. It was actually my first game ever. So uh, oh, that's cool. Huh? Yeah, really cool. I was on my phone looking at the team's roster your first year just because you were saying how, you know, how scared you were and, and looking at this roster. There were some guys that had been in your situation. Uh, Duchesne, a guy. I mean, obviously some high pe- uh, draft picks like Eric Johnson. So that probably helped ease you into it. And those guys were still fairly young, young, so mm-hmm. they could kind of articulate that to you too, no? Yeah, they, they helped a lot. I mean, I think – as the season started up, I got more comfortable than I was in training camp. And I lived with uh, Jaguar my first year as well. So that was awesome. He was amazing. Uh, such a great guy. What a guy. I played with him for a year. Unreal guy. Unreal how much, guy. How, much, how, about he, how much he sweats. <laughs> oh, man. He Dude. sweats. Uh, cr- more than he, anyone I've ever seen. He drinks like 15 Gatorades yeah. a day. I remember every morning he'd, he'd crush like two of those big 700 milliliter gatorades they're they're in the garage that actually um, sounds bad the way i said it i more meant in games like he would be sweating. oh yeah like, no he's always sweating yeah yeah he's, like I, i'm not trying to call him off for like sweating in the bar or something <laughs> 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 i'll pound him in the ass <laughs> just sweat his bag off <laughs> well like it, it's funny because you came in first overall pick and most of the time there's not much success team-wise for those guys. Yeah. And you were good. You guys made the playoffs. You had a really good year. And then instead of dealing it with your first year, then you guys had the drop-off. Yeah. So those second and third years team-wise and even personally for you must have been kind of hard, right? I mean, people were probably questioning, you know, your game, what was going on with the Avalanche. Like, who were you leaning on then? And, and was it as hard as it maybe looked from the outside? 
Yeah, you know, we had a we had a really good first year. I, I personally had a pretty good year as yeah. a rookie, um, and then I had a three three years in a row. I was I was a pretty average player. Um, you know, I think I had like. I had like 14 goals my second year. Yeah, like why is that? Like, well, can you? Put I don't know. I just, it's tough to, it's tough to imagine that now getting four, 14. Um, I mean, like, <laughs> sorry, you're, you're, like that, you're like that's a month <laughs> for me. Now. That would have been a. I mean, I had seven in my career. <laughs> two hundred over two hundred games. I no, mean. but I was just, I just, you know, I, I put a ton of pressure on myself. I'm a very competitive guy, and. Um, I think the year we came last was kind of a wake up call. It was my fourth. It was after my fourth season, and I'm watching guys like Matthews and McDavid dominate. Uh, Marner, um, you know, just so many young, amazing players in the league. Kucherov. I mean, I played junior against Kucherov. I was better than him then, and junior I thought. And then I'm watching all these guys put up a hundred points, and I'm just what it the hurt. Fuck's going yeah, on? it's yeah, like what is sure. it's like what is wrong with me? You know, I feel, you know, I. As a hockey player, I'm trying to, but you kind of judge yourself off of how you're playing hockey. Sometimes it's a dangerous thing to get into. You, you, you live as, your life based on how you're playing. Yeah, you, you know, know, if you have a bad year, then you think poorly of yourself as a human, um, and that can happen to a lot of athletes, I think. And you know, it's not right. It shouldn't be like that, but it was. And but anyways, I was watching these guys dominate, and I just kind of had to make a decision um, to take you know my commitment to another level, my mind to another level, and and uh try to be the best player i could be so. like what did that mean like diving into the diet side of things where so that hadn't been something you've done before maybe you know even skating more, more training off the ice yeah. more on ice sessions in the summer yeah well actually i got a sports psychologist um oh, shit, in really? denver wow uh, yep i got a sports psychologist um people who scoff at that stuff it really amazes oh me no it's no, I, I needed it like i'm a you know i'm a i'm a hothead you know like anybody <laughs> that plays with me would say that i Sometimes I let my emotions get the best of me. I get very negative and down on myself. And, and it's coming from a good place. You know, I want to win and right. I want to help my team and be the best that I can be. Um, but it happens. And, you know, I, I decided to, to get a sports psychologist and, and get more serious with, um, you know, treatment and nutrition and everything that comes along with it. And I think when you do one thing, you want to do everything really well. And, you know, it's it's been really helpful. Uh, did they give you the tools in order to maybe... Uh, for you to be able to help yourself, maybe say, let's say you're on the road and you need something to, you know, one of those tools in order to calm things down. Has it gotten to that level or do you have to frequent that, that sports psychologist the same amount of time? Yeah. Well, I think just staying present, a, a big, a big thing that I struggle with. Um, you know, you have a, you have a bad game. You're like, Oh, I might go four games on, you know, without one. And uh-huh. you know, you feel like it can snowball, but I'm just trying to, stay in the moment and um you know have different process goals for each game to to make me stay present it's so crazy to hear a player at your level and it just proves how mental like professional sports is because no matter what confidence can go very quickly but i'm wondering you have those two tough years you change some things you look in the mirror two years ago you end up with 97 points a huge breakout year in camp, were you like something's different? Like, did you know, like, going in this? this I, I feel different than I ever than I ever had before. Yeah, I had a good summer. I, I did have a really good summer. Um, <clears throat> I felt I had a really good preseason, and then the season came around. I got tight again. You know, I wanted to do so well, and I got really tight. Um, I think I had like five points in my first ten games, and I was the, like, the year you got ninety seven, you did. Yeah, wow. I did. I had five. Going on a, so the next I had one goal in my first ten games. And I remember you're panicking at that point, man. I was I like, I was like, here we go again. You know, this is supposed to be a big year for me. I remember scoring my seventh game uh, against Nash for my first goal of the year, and I I told Tice, I'm like one of twelve this year. You know, that's what, <laughs> that's what I said to Tice in in the huddle, like right away, like as a you know, I was half kidding, but I was like, geez, like at this pace. Um, but then I kind of, I kind of, that's the first year I had the sports psychologist, so I just kind of stuck with what what we're talking about and, and just trying to stay present and, and achieve my process goals and just, you know, doing little things that make me successful. And, um, it started working and I remember I had two and one against Chicago at home and that here was kind go. of the turning and Halloween. I remember on Halloween, a couple of my buddies up and from, from here came up to, to watch me play. I had two and one and, um, 
I started feeling it from there. And then you put your Crosby costume out and went to went to the Halloween party. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, real. Patrick Raw was your first coach, first NHL coach. What was he like as a coach? And was did you have any coaches like him before in your career? Well, I know not no, professional career. No, no. I mean, he was. Uh, I owe a lot to Patty. He drafted me. You know, I don't know. I think they. It was it, my draft year. Wasn't like a consensus. Uh, you know, it he, was you or Seth Jones. I yeah, kind of remember. Yeah, Seth Jones. Like Barkoff was in that draft. He's an amazing player. Um, so it was kind of the, between the three of us, I think, but it was a lot to do with me and Seth and they easily could have went with him and he's a monster now. So yeah, it wouldn't have yeah. been a bad choice. All three of those picks. Yeah. You, you literally couldn't argue. Yeah, for sure. You know? yeah, no, I yeah. think, I think any, any selection, but obviously I'm happy where I am. And, um, but Patty, yeah, he was, uh, he was intense for sure. And really, really smart hockey mind. And, um, his passion is, is something I've never seen. I didn't really want to get away from this talk. This is nice getting an in-depth look at well, maybe the struggles. It amazes me that it's like the highest level players that everyone's listening. The kids are listening at home and it's yeah. like it can happen to anyone. And the funniest thing you say is that you scored that first goal and you're still like, fuck, yeah. yeah. It's just one though. And it went off like, it went off. It was supposed to be a high tip to the, it was a power play goal. And it was supposed to be a pass and it hit their Yossi skating went in so <laughs> I didn't even really score it I was just like wow that's my first one so. were, were you getting the feeling inside of, of like first round our first overall bust yeah no for sure come on which is petrifying man that I don't know I don't crazy. know it's not but like bust as in like O to the league I was still getting like 50 to 60 points you're saying was, not a superstar type yeah bust. like I wanted to be I wanted to, to I didn't I honestly never thought I would I remember coming into my fifth year when I was up for the heart I was like, if I, could se- if, yeah, no. <laughs> if I get 70, I'll be like pumped. I'm thinking like 65. That might be where I am as a player. 65 yeah, like, to 80 point guy, I hopefully. Thought. I honestly thought that. It's not like a movie. Inspir- People watch these inspirational movies too much and think like, oh, it's like, oh, I came in and I was determined and I to get 100 and I did. Like, I didn't think I could. I honestly didn't. I didn't. I thought I was 65, 70 would be good for me and mm. that'd be a solid player and um but I also was scared of being a bust. I mean, I went first overall. I was labeled the next Sidney Crosby my whole life, um, which was a lot of pressure for sure. But, you know, I I wanted to be a top player in the league, but I didn't know if I could really get there. And, um, you know, once once I feel like after that season, you never really want to go back down. So. Damn, huh. is there no That's is there so no cool. doubt in your mind now? You're like, I'm going to that fucking league and I'm, I'm top five now, baby. You got I don't the, know you, about you got my the ranking. Juice? Well, oh, it, it I, has to be these two years yeah. have shown. Oh, but like, I, I, I am there. Like, I put you right below McDavid now. And yeah. no offense to Sid. I mean, I, I, if he you told take, Sid he was right below McDavid first interview. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just try. Whoever's in the seat next to me, I'm stroking <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah. I said that to fucking uh, Tyson Nash last week when I interviewed him. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. So this year. Not to bring up a sore subject, but 99 points, dude. Yeah. How many little oh, fucking oh things gosh. could have happened for that? Like, how many posts did you hit just to miss just, that century mark? Just, yeah, it's just. I remember, loser. I, remember, I remember you loser. I remember Marshy, Brad Marshaw. We yeah. we skate together, uh, and we have a group chat like our summer skate. It's like me, Sid, Marshy, uh, Odie. Get a shout out to Sean O'Donnell. He'll love that. Uh, a few other guys are in the group chat and. He hit a hundred, like three games left, and then he—I don't think he played after that. So he had a hundred and shut it down. He's like, he's like, Nate, you better get a hundred. I'm be all over oh. you. This how many? Po- how many games left with ninety nine? How many for me? How many games left were in the year when you got ninety nine? Uh, just one. Oh, so just so one game it was like, it. and I was, we were in. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I don't know if I want to play. Like, you know, like I don't want to be that guy to try to get a hundred. And and Joe Sackick was like, he's like. I think he said like he had to get the scoring record once and he got two in the first period then shut her down for the rest <laughs> of the game like one of the best players ever like okay I'll go try and I scored in the second and then the boys were just feeding me like in the third it was uh, it was oh, almost you, so embarrassing no, I, so, like, I'm sorry you had 98 going into the last game Sorry, yeah, I had 98. Oh, oh right. yeah, yeah. So, no, I'm sorry, I'm not a math guy either. <laughs> no, but I'm just thinking I didn't know if you needed think, one. Needing no, I needed, two is a little different. Two. I needed two, right? So I'm like, uh, like, do I even? Do I even try? But I got one in the in the second. That's uh, the Quebec Major Junior League education kicking. Yeah, right no, that's, uh, thank <laughs> yeah, God that's, it worked out for yeah, hockey, buddy. Thank God. Yeah. That's the Quebec Major Junior League. The guy just trying to get his own individual numbers. Yeah, yeah you fucking Quebec guys. <laughs> it's all about his, the stats. <laughs> uh, Tyson Berry, another one here. Uh, he told me to ask you about. Uh, we should have just had him on when you first started golf, 
and you were dog shit, and if, you la- <laughs> if anyone laughed at you when you hit a bad shot, you would go b- berserk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so embarrassing. <laughs> He said you he, he almost fought one of your assistant coaches. <laughs> let's go, let's go. Yeah. Who the fuck was it? Who was it? <laughs> we gotta this hear this whole of, story. Let's I hear can the whole be a story. bit of a psychopath. And part one of the question is me, O'Reilly, and Tice would always. I mean, when I came to the league, Factor was was twenty two years old. So what a had, nickname. Fact the fact daddy, yeah. yeah just Ryan a, O'Reilly. just a weapon. Like everything this guy yep. did was best style, like best hair. He's got he cool. guitar. He's, he's, a, he's a Scotty Upshaw. He's just such with a, the Con Smythe. With yeah. the, <laughs> he's, he's yeah. He's just such a cool guy. But anyways, uh, Tice, me and Tice hit it off right away. So we'd go golf, and I was horrible. But I thought like I wasn't as bad as I. You know, every golfer is pretty. You always think you're better than you are at for golf. sure. And and I was so competitive that I wanted to to pure one every shot. And whenever I. I'd shank when the boys would start laughing. I'd, I'd fucking lose it. I'd try to fight Tyson Factor. I was like, shut, shut your mouth. Like, I was so then they're just rooting for but, you to but shank not one like even more. Joking fighting, like Let's legit. Do this. A I wires was, cross. I was going to violence. Yeah, and that's yeah. And then with with Dave Dave Farish and uh, Tyson Barry and I golfed together. So our assistant coach. I played for Dave Farish. Did you play for yeah, the Farish, he was Farish wheel? <laughs> he was assistant in Anaheim when I was there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so coach the D, too. He's a great guy. Like He's yeah. such an awesome dude. And Go ahead, Biz. Go ahead. Well, no, I was going to hop in. I, now it all comes back to me. Maybe when you power slammed Tyson Barry overseas, maybe it was him getting back to him for making fun of the golf swing. That's... Uh, that's, you- that's that's not confirmed. I don't know. If, I don't remember that incident. So <laughs> okay, I sorry. Know, I, back to I don't know. What you're talk- I don't then. know what you're talking about. We'll get to the other one later. Um, I don't know if I can even tell that. I don't think Tice would care. Um, and the golf one. I'm sorry. And sorry. No, no. You're good. I'm just thinking about that uh, horrific event. Um, so yeah, I I teed off and I whatever. I chunked one of the woods or the the pond and. <laughs> and Dave was talking to my back <laughs> oh, oh, Dave, uh, I don't know if you know who you're golfing with, sir. <laughs> I can't, so I just started screaming at our assistant coach. I'm like, don't talk about my fucking backswing, Dave. <laughs> and Dave is like the nicest guy ever. So he just starts laughing. And Tice is like, are you seriously yelling at our coach right now? <laughs> we're playing. We're going to play golf after this. I'm already just like, okay, uh, no, we're not playing any music well, this I mean, round. Grab another yeah. ball. I mean, I, I don't know. care if I talk at someone's backswing. I mean, I'm just like, hey, sorry, my bad. Tee yeah. up another one. I know, and I think that's the year I had 12 tucks, so I was extra a little fiery. So. <laughs> a little more irritable. Yeah. What do you got for him, R.A.? Right? Well, I want to ask actually about one of your other teammates, Miko Rantanen. I yep. think he's been somewhat of a revelation the last couple of years. I yeah. think he was somewhat of a high pick, but a lot of fans didn't really realize he was this good. Did you know he was going to be this good at some point? Um, you never really know, but I remember seeing him for the first time, and he's 6'4", 225, um, just a horse, and amazing guy too those fins are all pretty good guys i've never played with a bad fin or swede for that matter um but he is amazing he's a amazing player to play with and um he makes uh, my life really easy he eats those tough pucks down low and protects them he's so he's so good so i'm so lucky to play with him yeah that's the thing about your line you get three guys i mean if you put one of you on any other line you just would probably have success too and put all three together man it's a, it's a fabulous line you got going there yeah it's kind of you know similar to the the Bergeron line in Boston, I think, you yep. know, I think we have three guys that do something different, um, bring something different to the table and it works. Yeah, good point. What was crazy about Rotten and is, is he was in the American league for like half the year. He um, played a full year. Yeah. He, he, uh, he was up and down a little bit, I believe. Correct. Yeah. He played. Yeah. He played like eight, nine games. Yep. I remember. And then the next year you could tell he had a bit of a breakout, but like, I mean, this past year, was like, that was fucking nuts. Yeah. He was leading the league in points for the first four months of the season, I think. Um, then our whole team kind of got cold. We had a horrible, I think we won like four games in 27. You guys went so, I was all over you guys. I know. I'm like, I what know. are these guys doing? I know. It cost we, them a killing. Oh, yeah. yeah, I think they cost me some money. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> we all got cold, but Miko could have won the scoring title this year, you know, if it was just a disaster for a bit of the second half, but um, you know, he's amazing. He's way faster than he looks, huh? Yeah. Like on yeah. TV, it, he, it's, it's very smooth. He's big, almost Malkin-like. I feel like a lot of big guys are deceivingly fast. Yeah. He doesn't. Their legs aren't going a million miles an hour, so it doesn't look like it. But he, uh, no, he, he's got no flaws. He's special. Uh, he told me to ask you about uh, Tyson Berry did uh, <laughs> about when you you jumped on when he tried to jump on Tyson Berry's yacht. 
in the middle of the night in Cannes, the film festival. Con is it called Canes? Cons. <laughs> the Canes Film Festival. The uh, Carolina Hurricanes <laughs> Film Festival. Oh, that's gorgeous. That's the best one. That, the fact that that just happened is too perfect because we can't we can't re-record that Canes. one. I love you, Biz. <laughs> okay, well, how do you say it? It's Con. Uh, con. All right. Even cons, but <laughs> Canes. Yeah, I. So I was like, I was at I don't know, like late. It was like late and um, pitch black outside. We're, we we uh, we went to the the. The Con Film Festival, <laughs> um, and it was a big crew of us, and uh, it was me, Sid, Braden Shen, Tyson Berry, Roman Yossi. Wow, just a bunch of weapons! Yeah. Holy, your Roman Yossi's a stud. Stud, absolutely, such an amazing guy, awesome Best guy. guy. Um, and Sid's uh, buddy Mike Chason, killer. Um, and I tried jumping on the yacht. Like, there's like a they close like the. Uh, What's it like? A the pier? Br- the bridge? Yeah, a little bridge. The little bridge to the yacht from the, I don't know. Sid, what do you call the, like, you know, like the, from the walkway to the yacht, like the little bridge? Anyways, they, they put that up so people can't just walk on your yacht at night. So I tried jumping from, this was at like <laughs> four in the morning. I tried, I tried jumping from the walkway or boardwalk to the yacht <laughs> and I fell in the water. Oh, no. And I had a couple of drinks. And I don't know. Shocker. Yeah, it's weird. And I like I remember my head was hitting the rope, and <laughs> and I was just in this daze in this in the in the ocean in in France, and I didn't know where the where I At was. Four in the morning. Four in the morning. <laughs> Jason Bourne. <laughs> like loaded. Yeah, I was loaded. And and, <laughs> and then I I walk into Tyson's room. And I'm like soaking wet. <laughs> He's like, he's like, what are you doing? Where are you coming from? Yeah, like, what are you? He was like, he thought I was like a, a he's gonna kill him or something. I, it was. Jason Bourne is actually perfect. Yeah, floating around in cons, or as I, Biz called it, canes. I'm just lucky I didn't do yeah, the Carolina Hurricane. What, what was the reason all you guys were in con? Was there a particular movie that you were there for, or was it a vacation? No, I didn't even know why, why we even. I didn't even know anything back then. Um, I still don't, but. We all we were playing world championships together, um, and we just want to want to do a vacation. We're already in uh, Prague. Good Prague's a pretty good spot. Is that too. team Sid was on. You guys won. Yeah, we won. Sick. Yeah, we won that. We were uh, we had an amazing team: Brent yeah. Burns, Giroux, Sid, Hall, Eberle, Dutchy, Spezza. Oh, really? Yeah, it was like an it was like a mini Olympic team. Um, in Prague. In Prague, yeah. What a city. What a city that <laughs> Prague is. Another one from Tyson Berry. He also thinks he's gangsta. All he <laughs> listens to is hip hop. His nickname's The Dog. Two G's. <laughs> <laughs> and, then he, and then you said you have a little rapper nickname for, for uh, Sidney Crosby. Uh, yeah, Lil Cross is what we all call him. <laughs> <laughs> Little cross. Oh, God, no. oh my God! Inject that. Hey, yeah. Grinelli, print the T-shirts. Little cross. Print you the should sell those T-shirts. <laughs> those would be, yeah. Oh, yeah. the people listening to this, they're just picturing your summer skate group chat of you, Marsha. Said they're just like, get me in that. How do we see that? <laughs> um, there's rumors. I mean, uh, apparently there was a rumor of Tyson Berry potentially getting moved to Vancouver. I mean, man, this guy's one of your best friends. Like when you heard that, you must have been a little bit rattled. Yeah, I mean we're we're really close, and um, I don't know what's gonna happen. I hope I hope he stays for the rest of my career. Um, he's an amazing player. Sign easy to get sixty points as a D man, fifty to sixty every year. Um, well, he's snapping. I know I'm his yeah, agent. I, I think he's I getting ten million. Yeah, he's. Oh, worth it's up to it. ten now. You got him at. Yeah, I got he's him. Worth okay. It. He's okay. worth it. He's uh, he's a special player, and you know, Tys, he's one of the funniest guys you meet. You can oh. MC any wedding. I think he's he's gonna have the record for the most best mans. Like we try to plan a trip this summer, like a golf trip we do every year, and he's like, "Oh, I'm the best man at that this wedding, that wedding every week." Oh, he's wedding so. guy. It's Tyson Berry Big is wedding guy. such a solid human being. The best, guy. so generous, just yeah, salt to the earth. He's an amazing um, guy. Yeah, I've, I've gotten to know him a little bit. Humble brag. <laughs> I, I understand that uh, you're a fellow thespian. You've done a little acting, I, uh, I've read. <gasps> yeah. Pardon? What? <laughs> That's why you were so good when we did that thing with uh, TSN last year. Oh, but the... We did some little... Oh, in Vegas? Or yeah, it was Sportsnet, yeah, 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 excuse Sportsnet. me. Yeah, you're the... Call, you're the and the and Pasha, my, my right-hand man who videos most of my stuff, <laughs> we, we noticed, I'm like, this guy's pretty, pretty natural in front of the camera. Like, we could have probably gotten more out of him. When did you act? I did. Did you hear of Mr. D? 
but with Jerry D, it was on Netflix. He, yeah, like uh, he's the he's the Canadian comedian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's really funny. He's actually big into golf. Very too. funny. Yeah, great. He's from. Uh, I think he's from Toronto, but went to school in Antigonish, and he, and he married a girl from around here. So he, he films in Halifax oh. that show every summer. So I went on it two or three times, which was awesome. And then uh, the I went on the Trailer Park Boys uh, twice now. Um, and I used to, off seasons were a little, not as, uh, I didn't dial in as much as I used to. It's kind of like. Yeah, we, saw, we were going over those stats. I got, I got 50 points. Yeah, I got 12 goals. Now you 99. <laughs> when I did that, I was like 218. I was a unit. Uh, the, <laughs> if you want to go check out the first cameo at the Trailer Park Boys. Um, what are you now? I'm like. 195. No shit. Whoa. You, that much heavier. Or you did a Keith Yandel. I remember Keith Yandel. Yeah, he, he was like 250, year. though. Two, yeah, he was like a bowling ball. He looked like R.A. Yeah. He was R.A. Oh, so, that's a, that was an absolute ricochet shot, shot right there. <laughs> shot right to the face. Sorry ricochet about that. shot right See, there. I did, I, I did the Trailer Park Boys twice, and uh, those guys are hilarious. They're all from, like, Cool Harbor. Um, oh, it's right. That's, they're like, they're local guys. Because Americans so, don't. They don't even really get to see it, I don't think, as much. Like, it's not nearly as big there, but it's hilarious. What was your role in the Trailer Park Boys? They did, like, a hockey camp, and I forget what the first one was, but the second one was, like, an animation, and they kidnapped me to play, like, in their Trailer Park. They're playing against the Moncton Mudslides. <laughs> was this team, it's on Netflix. I mean, if you want to go check it out. I'll get some pretty, views. Oh, yeah, for good. sure. It's we'll give good. you guys a little boost. Make sure we get some residual uh, money off of that. <laughs> Um, Cross t-shirts. What else are we gonna ask him about? We gotta we gotta ask him a few more. Yeah. Oh, let me do an ad read, live ad read. Uh-oh. Oh, Jesus! Oh, I don't women and children. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> okay, there. One sec here. Bear with me. Is this CCM. Have you always oh, been yeah. CCM? Yeah, yeah. Since like my second Just year junior. Him, hey, for sure. <laughs> I was sponsored by CCM too. We, nice me, you, and Sid. <laughs> think they'll get me some skates, Biz. I haven't laced up in a while. I think they may hook me up. We're gonna get you some skates. We're gonna get. You <laughs> Core 80K Skate. The new Rib Core 80K Skates were designed for the most creative players on the ice, like RA with a dope in his system. <laughs> with flex frame technology and a new ADPT memory foam, this skate delivers superior stability, flexibility, and comfort, allowing players to master their edges and keep their opponents guessing. With the new quick release Speed Blade XS holder, not even a blade change can slow them down. The Ribcore ADK skate. And let's hope the dope comment doesn't piss CCM off and we can just keep on rolling. Baby. It's legal, yeah. So it's le- cannabis. You mean cannabis, not, not anything else. Uh, let's talk more about CCM and just stroke them off. Um, yeah, but you definitely started because Sid wore all CCM. You're like, I'm wearing all CCM. Well, he was Reebok, I think. But it's still. the same thing. Same man. thing. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Or I guess it. I guess the skates were actually Reeboks for a while. They were. They yeah. weren't just CCM, but now it's all all the same. What else you got to ask him, Are you got to have some questions in that laptop of yours? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, Denver's a city. I think that kind of flies under the radar sports wise, even though there are four major sports there. What's your experience been like playing there so far? Yeah, it's awesome. Um, go to Bronco games, Rocky games, Nugget games. Um, you sit courtside. I do, yeah. Cause you our, do? Our owners own the Nuggets, so they oh, give yeah. us tickets. They're like, well, we, we, got a, we got me on a fair deal. You better be fucking giving me court <laughs> sides, buddy. <laughs> I'm only making five the and a half. Most underpaid player in pro sports. So, uh, yeah, give me court side season <laughs> tickets, please. Yeah, so it's great. I mean, the fans are, you know, it was tough. You know, we had a tough decade as an organization, but they're coming back now. So we're sold at every game. It's It's been great. Nice. Some very bright times, actually, for the Avs. You know, you end yeah. up getting the really high pick this year when you wouldn't have gotten it without the Duchesne trade. So yeah. for you, you got to be looking at, like, dude, our window's just starting to open. Yeah, all of our top players are 26 and yeah. under. And, you know, with that Kale McCarr is unbelievable. Oh, wow. Is he, right, so is he right nasty? Away, you could tell. Un- unbelievable, this guy. I couldn't believe how good he was. I remember, like, our first game, I think he came in in game three at home and morning skate. And I just, like, usually I don't really stay out there long, but I just, like, sat on the bench and like watched him like do like blue line shooting the way he moved on the blue line him it was amazing he looks he looks exactly like eric carlson a 21 year old eric carlson wow he is high praise he, is, he flies he around flies. that's a stroke off if yeah. i've ever seen he, one he fl- he's uh he's gonna be uh he's gonna be an amazing player i'm not implying you need any improvement but what part of your game do you think might need any improvement um yeah, i think my down low game you know i'm i uh <laughs> 
Paycheck, he's like paycheck size. No, no, please. on the ice, on the ice. <laughs> <laughs> Biz, yeah. Is that a Jamie Ben? Yo, you're like, is that no. a Jamie Ben <laughs> reference? Yeah, that's a Jamie Ben reference. I've heard that on the podcast. A oh, shit. You're like, no, nah, man, Jamie. fuck that. Tongue game 100, baby. <laughs> Yeah, me and Lil Cross, you know. I'm yeah. late D.O. Double G. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, I'm getting noggin', baby. I don't need to improve shit. Yeah, fuck <laughs> that, baby. What are you talking about, Ray? I'm, I'm already perfect. D.O. Double G. Uh, well, dude, thank you so much, man, for joining us. This has been great. I mean, busy. What do you mean? He didn't even answer the question. What was it? I don't know. I don't remember. It's oh, I thought. It was, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you got to do? He said down low no. game. That's how the joke started, <laughs> Biz. Fuck. Gonna, down low. Yeah. <laughs> my, the pH levels were off. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't play that. Night. He had pasta that day. Yeah, <laughs> no, just just watching Sid how well he protects the puck. I'll never get to that level, but if I can do anything like that, I'd be pretty happy. And that's what we work on a lot in the off season. Oh, let's hey, let's think of some Sid stories that you can tell just to get him going. How mad does he get on the ice in in the summer if he like isn't dominating? Yeah, we uh, there's some near some near fights for sure. We're always on different teams, three on three. And then Marshy kind of like picks his own team. He, he, he's he, such a he rat. stirs the pot oh, on both God. teams. Like Marshy exactly. is like, <laughs> he's like exactly like how you think. Like the whole time he tr- he's just chirping everybody <laughs> on the ice, like just carving everybody. If you lose the puck, he's all over you. If he snipes, he's like not like you know like showing everybody. And um, but he's an awesome guy. I love I love being around Marshy. He's you, an awesome. You guys guy. have a group chat where let's say he licks a guy's face. You guys are all like Marshy, what are you doing? <laughs> like like what's going on in these group? They're chats? the only guys that aren't surprised. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like just well, I think nobody's surprised what, what he does anymore. But no, he uh, we're just chirping each other all the time, and you know we have a lot of fun. Now, well, this summer you guys chirp about like. The end of the way his team season ended is that something you're <laughs> <laughs> you you That's a little low, bro. Throat. No, that's uh, yeah. No, I think I'll just get ripped about getting 99 and how he got 100. So oh yeah. I'm not, I'm not looking forward to to Marcy just carving me. Sid's kind of sitting out of the picture here. Uh, any questions you have for Nate that you'd want him to answer on this podcast? Maybe put him on the spot. <laughs> it's your specialty, Sid. Yeah. <laughs> We're just. Yeah, we were, but was there anything in particular about the summer skates you would like me to ask him? Him launching a stick into the match yesterday. Oh! Just yesterday. Oh. Oh. Just yesterday. Okay, let's fly in the psychologist. No, it turns out it actually... Fly in the psychologist. Bring him in here. <laughs> this guy's off his fucking meds. <laughs> He's actually the one who threw the spin doctor when Sid originally got the club. Well, to yeah. go... To actually to, to jump onto that story, like... He thought the spin doctor was like totally fine the, the whole time he was using it. And it had like teeth. Like yeah. he was like in he was in like the fescue at Oakbot. He sucked it back three <laughs> three feet for a tap in birdie. I'm like I I tried fighting him on seventeen green. I was so pissed, but uh, but yeah, yesterday I was just I had enough and what is it, like miss net or a loss or what what makes you chuck your stick? You just had ninety nine points and in the NHL. Caught in the mesh. It's, and it's June. Yeah, I don't know. I just so like we do this drill where loser has to do like a down and back and I did like two in a row already so I had to do a third one I just lost I chucked my stick in the mesh and I made a scene there was like fans watching me and stuff I'm, just, I'm ashamed after but I don't really I'm not really thinking so you're fun. a bit of a snap show but you're well aware of it and working on it yeah no I'm uh, I'm definitely aware and um yeah, I'm not. Makes you who you I'm are. I'm not in denial about my temper. That's for sure. <laughs> well, buddy, that uh, that was perfect. Uh, this, of course, was brought to you by CCM, a company that sponsored myself, Nate McKinnon, <laughs> and Sidney Crosby. All paid sponsors, by the way, uh, sponsorships, I should say. Uh, I'm just waiting for my call from Tim Hortons. Your sticks yeah. are in the mail. Um, but uh, thank you for doing this. This is incredible. A lot of great insight. Some things I didn't know about you. Yeah. And I think that wraps things up for our trip out east. Yeah, Halifax, what a city. Great town. Great. And, I, I dominated this place during World Juniors. Not on the ice. And but. once again, <laughs> thank you to the Stubborn Goat for, for yep. uh, setting up this beautiful room for us, for us to get this uh, audio and video. So thanks, Nate. Yeah, thanks for having Dog. me. Dog.